Hey guys, we here. Thanks for tuning in. This is the Side Tide Podcast number 28. I'm going to talk about ayahuasca and women's rights and how it's related to psychedelic freedom. And as well, I have an article on these Brazilian scientists that have actually conducted placebo-controlled studies with this ayahuasca brew. So I will see y'all after the intro. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome once again. Hopefully y'all are having a wonderful morning, evening, night, midnight special, whatever time this is coming at you. Take this energy now that we all in the same boat, we can start the conversation. Hey man, it's a good day, it's a good day. I had to re-record this, but I'm still on the roll. Um, Hopefully y'all having a beautiful day, like I said before, but I want to get into this ayahuasca dimethyltryptamine talk. And for those who, I'm going to start though, for those who not really on board with what ayahuasca is, I'm going to go into it. It's a, before I go into any of this, is that's why my speech is so hesitant, is the side tie podcast does not condone the use of illegal or legal drugs. What we do in this channel is we go over scientific articles done by hospitals and we review them. And also I give my two cents worth of experience. This is for educational purposes. What you do with your body is what you do with your body. I'm not telling you to go out and do any of these things. So now that that is out of the way, back to the ayahuasca, that methyltryptamine is all related. For those who don't know, ayahuasca contains DMT. And to even tie back farther for us to all get in this conversation together, are um, all of these plant medicines that I talk about, psilocybin, mushrooms, um, um, Lysergic acid dimethylide, LSD, DMT, and now ayahuasca, they all are similar. They're all similar in their chemical structure. Like when you look at it and it got like the hexagon and everything, if you want to visualize it, it's either like oxygen, atom taken away, or this line that was connected in this line is now over there. But it's all like have the same base, it's just the oxygen atom removed or carbon atom removed or take or add it it's something it's all derivative from tryptophan they're all similar but like the the base is tryptophan and then it goes into serotonin the 5h2a receptors and all of these chemicals are found are endogenous to your body your body actually creates dmt in your gut and in your liver and in the pineal glands of rats so if you um put a correlation to it in my mind is is produced in our pineal gland and our pituitary gland as well because during my studies um and people that meditate and everything they say you hear about the third eye and everything and how yeah you're able to experience other realms and talk a lot of things that y'all are not probably familiar with a lot of weird things and they did talk about the pineal gland and everything so dealing with breathing in and out That's one of the secrets. That's one of the secrets to releasing and building up more DMT into your brain. So I believe if it's found in rats, I'm just saying, if we tie, just tie, just tie, just tie, it's all connected to actually us developing these same chemicals in our in our pituitary gland and in our pineal gland. And if, for those who don't know, just ties when you combine your mind with your heart, combine that circle, let it keep spinning, you let whatever come out, it just comes out. It's a form of meditation. Just tie. <laughs> But um, the, the ayahuasca and everything, it's all similar and they all get you to similar states. But the cool thing about ayahuasca is that it was found in the Amazonian jungle by the indigenous tribes and people that live there seemingly by accident and through the logical side of the brain. But they say that they were led to these actual um, places. And what they did was they found a random vine and a random leaf the cappy leaf and I forget the other name of the vine and they connected, they brew it together in the tea and then they sip the tea and they go on a six hour journey. You feel me? <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> and that's what that's, and it's bringing about a lot of healing, a lot of healing in the people that actually partake in these ceremonies and what they're and Terrence McKenna and Dennis McKenna, they were one of the first ones to actually go from the West from from our Western civilization culture to to, to realize these um, the ayahuasca brew, 
They were one of the first ones. But it was actually being done there for thousands of years. So it to, for it to be being studied right now by scientists is very awesome and very welcoming to in my experience. To my experience. I'm really happy that the Brazilian scientists are now doing something. Somebody gotta start somewhere. But just as we hear about these plant medicines curing PTSD, depression, anxiety, and past traumas, which is all tie related together, um, that's the same thing that's going on with this ayahuasca brew. And but the thing about it right now is a bunch of rich people going down there, in my view. People with a lot of money because it costs a lot of money to do these things. But to each his own. And I believe that if you really do want this journey, you can manifest it for yourself. And you can manifest it in your reality so that this can actually occur and actually happen. Just ta. Just ta. Just ta. <clears throat> but yeah, that's a big thing. And I believe they're getting their stuff right. So I'm rich. I'm rich in spirit and heart. So I'm, I'm, I never, I'm, y'all, y'all see where I'm going with this, <laughs> but as the big picture, we all have to do our research. And that's why I'm always trying to start this conversation with y'all starting this conversation. not actually not trying, starting it so that y'all can go out and so that we can all go out, all go out and get this information and experiences for ourselves and not like this classism that seems to like kind of naturally Fold, uh, come into existence and fold so that we all can partake in this peace and all partake in this knowledge and all partake in this true healing. Because as y'all see in the previous Tai Tai studies, it actually transforms the neurons in your brain, neurogenesis, neuroplasticity. The neurons start creating new pathways so that you're not connected to the trauma, so that you're not making decisions, the same decisions that you did in the past. But all right, guys, let's go into, let's go into the first article I got prepared for y'all. This article is actually from Cambridge, from Cambridge Core, Uni Cambridge University. <laughs> I get this up here. All right. So shout outs to Cambridge University for actually releasing this. That's pretty cool. And shout outs to Fernande Dayana Hasolia Katia for releasing this article. It was published on June 15th, 2018. So this is fairly recent. This is fairly recent. And this is titled, Rapid Antidepressant Effects of the Psychedelic Ayahuasca and Treatment Resistant Depression, a Randomized Placebo Controlled Trial. Background, let's get to this background. And y'all see I got the glasses. I didn't even mention the glasses. <laughs> Just so I could see these words and not have to struggle right now. All right, background. Recent open label trials show that psychedelics such as ayahuasca hold promise as fast onset antidepressants and treatment resistant depression. And what that means, guys, is that these um, people were trying other drugs that was prescribed to them and they were not working. They were not working Zoloft's and amphetamines, anything. Um, related to actually that the doctors give out is not working. It's a high percentage of this going on in the world. Worldwide, people are suffering from depression and PTSD. Now, let's get back into this. Um, a methods, this is what they did. To test the antidepressant effects of ayahuasca, we conducted a, a parallel arm, double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trial in 29 patients with treatment-resistant depression. Patients received a single dose of the ayahuasca or placebo. We assessed changes in depression severely with the mon Montgomery Asperger Depression Rating Scale, the MAD and the Hamilton Depression Rating Scale at baseline and at 1D1, 2D2, and 7D7 days after dosing. So that D1 means day 1, D2, day 2, D7, day 7, like after they actually conducted the trial. And the rating scale, the MADRS, or the MADRS, and the, M the Hamilton Depression Rating Scale, that's what they've 
that's just something therapists and everything so that they can check the level of depression. It's a standardized scale of depression so that they can see what goes on and actually be able to compare results with other sciences. It's breaking it down. All right, um, results. We observe significant, I hear this, hold on. I'm trying to go back up, sorry guys. All right, it says, results. We observe significant antidepressant effects of ayahuasca when compared with placebo at all points. MDRS scale scores were significantly lower in the ayahuasca group compared with placebo at D1 and D2, day one and day two. It went from a P, a P equals 0 0.04 at day one and two, and then at day seven, and went to P was less than negative 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0001. So that's, to me, in my mind, that's a huge drop. That's, that's a significant drop. But shout out to the placebo. Salute to y'all. Hopefully y'all got to partake of the medicine once they saw it was actually working. And they can just make y'all go out and do your own thing. Man. Between groups, effect sizes increased. Wait. Between group, effect sizes increased from day one to day seven. Let's see, y'all can read those numbers. Response rates were high for both group rates at D1 and D2 and significantly higher in the ayahuasca group at D7. Day 7, obviously. 64% versus 27%. And the P was equal to 0. I mean, 0. 0.04. Remission rate showed a trend towards significant since at day 7. 37 versus 7 percent so it takes a while for it to integrate for you to actually start feeling like oh wow this life is very awesome you still deal with in my mind you still deal with a lot of things you still deal with a lot of um still deal with a lot of traumas and everything you have to integrate and that's why these sessions they're mostly done in like three sessions not just a wham bam thank you ma'am it's like a you prepare with um, talk it out about some traumas or most of the time you per the people that actually partake in these ceremonies they do a fasting they eat certain foods and they stay away from sexual activity for like 30 days or two weeks whatever it is for your experience that's calling but they do a car sort of cleansing so they can get things prepared before this but also they take like levels of dosages throughout the three sessions that can like last two to three weeks sometimes so they would just get take higher and higher dosages each time each time going deeper and deeper into themselves into the realm of existence of all so it takes some getting used to it takes some getting used to actually dealing with these things that come up out of your subconscious and all but let's get to the conclusion let's get to this conclusion to our knowledge, this is the first trial to test a psychedelic substance and treatment-resistant depression. Mm. Yeah, to our knowledge, to their knowledge. Overall, this study brings new evidence supporting the safety and therapeutic value of ayahuasca. This first one I heard by ayahuasca, though. Closed, dosed within an appropriate setting to help treat depression. This study is registered at clinicaltrials.gov. So thank y'all. Thank y'all for sending that article in and for actually, for those doctors for actually conducting it and risking y'all lives. Even though I'm not seeing now that it's, it's legal for religious purposes in Brazil and Peru, not just for recreational. Even though indigenous, they can't stop them. But you never know. But what I had to say about... um trials and going into the past with these ayahuascas i was listening to joe rogan a couple days ago and it was an old video but he was um interviewing a guest and he was talking about another guest so this is a story review of somebody review of somebody else's story <laughs> but, but what he was saying was how his friend was going was having an ayahuasca treatment going on healing session and he felt like he was choking choking for a long time like choking they was like trying to calm him down and everything and he was having an experience with people called bad trip a challenging a very challenging trip 
and they didn't know what how to help him. He wasn't really talking. He was just um, going into his own zone, and it wasn't appearing in his three three reality as him. He was going through good things. It was, seemed like he's going through challenges. But the thing that I bring it up is because is that what they saw. I mean, what he talked about afterwards of his story. He was seeing visions and actually reliving his childbirth of him actually go, coming into this world through his mother's vagina. So what happened was that the umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck during childbirth. But it, and it affected him all the way up until this point where he re-experienced it during his ayahuasca journey. And he was shown visions and he was shown stuff that was saying how this traumatic event, it was traumatic, affected his lifestyle then on out as a kid until then in ways that he would have never ever knew or never expected until he took the brew and went back in the past and experienced him choking with the umbilical cord. So when I say that your past traumas, you're made up of everything that happens to you and that we need to just tie, just tie, just tie on our lives and actually reflect on our past and be able to face our fears and actually become to the awareness, point of awareness with these plant medicines. That's why I'm happy alongside um, therapeutic uh, therapy, psychotherapy, or with a shaman or a guru or something like that. Um, partaking these substances and um, actually partaking true healings so that the neuro you can see it in a 3D reality as the neuroplasticity going on and your brain actually be becoming rewired things parts of your brain lighting up and communicating with each other that don't usually communicate and, and then all in the spiritual thought realm which is all to me the same thing start thinking more positive thoughts ease up of anxiety you start feeling more connected to things around you have a bigger picture that bigger sense of the world that is much more to what is in front of your face remember that phrase things are never as they seem that's where that comes from it's not to just be taken as, um, oh, it's a lot of shady people out here and stuff like that. But, no, oh, things are never as they seem. This world is my an illusion. Man, I just had to get that awesome story and two cents out there. But I have another article for y'all on, I think it's based on how I found the, the article I just read to y'all. It's about Brazilian scientists and more ayahuasca. So let's tie on this. Da, 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 da. Let's minimize this. Then use that scroll. All right, this says how psychedelics, how psycho, ah, oh, wait, 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 my bad. <laughs> how psychedelic drugs are being used to fight depression. And this article came out. I think they said, yeah, uh, 10 21 2018. That's about four days ago from this date and experience. Okay, just noticed that. I don't understand why that's so big. <laughs> but it's by Luis Fernando. Toy for you. Okay, he said, Lou, Leon is a young Brazilian man who has long struggled with depression. He keeps an anonymous blog in Portuguese where he describes the challenge of living with mental illness that affects some 300 million people worldwide according to the World Health Organization. Leon is among the roughly 30% of those patients with treatment resistant depression. Available antidepressants like selective serotonin reputate inhibitors do not alleviate his depressive mood, fatigue, anxiety, low self esteem, and suicidal thoughts. And I used to suffer from all of this as a young teenager, all of this, but I never took the road of taking selective serotonin reputate inhibitors or Zoloft or any of those other, other avenues. But that's what led to my abuse of cannabis as well. But to each his own. A new study may hope for Leon and others like him. 
our team of Brazilian scientists have conducted the first randomized placebo-controlled clinical trial of ayahuasca, a psychedelic drink made of the Amazonian plants. The results published in the journal Psychological Medicine suggest that ayahuasca can treat hard-to-treat depression, which we was going over before. All right, right here they actually say the name of the the plant, the two plants that you combine to create this awesome brew. It's called the vine of the spirits. Ayahuasca, a word from the indigenous Kucha language means the vine of the spirits. People in the Amazonian region of Brazil, Peru, Colombia, and Ecuador have for centuries used ayahuasca for therapeutic and spiritual purposes. Yeah, that's what I was telling y'all before. And the thing, that's what I forgot. The cool thing about the ayahuasca and everything and how awesome it was that the indigenous tribes actually combined these two plants was that DMT you wait hold on one second sorry about that oh Sorry, um, I thought I heard something playing through here. But yeah, DMT, when smoked in the, the extracted form, it's, it's able to get into your bloodstream and everything and see it's because it's smoked. But when it's eaten through a plant or brewed to it in a tea, it's broken down by your gut and everything too fast in order to produce the psychedelic effects, the plant medicine effects. But with these indigenous people came across was a MAOI inhibitor, monoxidate inhibitor. And what that does when combined, it allows your gut and everything to actually process the DMT. And it takes about seven to eight hours to actually process it. And that's why the, the ayahuasca journey lasts that long. So if it wasn't for them discovering this random plant that had contained the MOI inhibitor, the other plant, the cappy plant, or the most house still is, would not mean anything. So it's really some magic going on. Nothing, nothing is coincidence. Synchronicities always are happening around us. All right, it's called the Vine of the Spirits to them. And Vine of the Soul. That's what I usually hear, the Vine of the Soul. <laughs> Here go the two plants. The Ban Isteropis Cappy, a vine that twists its way up the treetops across the riverbanks in the Amazon basin, is boiled together with the Citrochia viridis, a shrub which whose leaves contain the psychoactive molecule DMT. Yes, switch up what I said. The Cappy is the one that contains the MOI inhibitor, I guess. I swore it was the opposite, but well, we're gonna keep tying. We're gonna keep tying together. And this actually, this purple stuff is Mimosa Hostilis. It contains a high, high amount of DMT. And what people don't understand is that DMT is not just found in your body, as I said earlier, but it's found in every plant or all around you. And you're probably thinking and we're asking me, well, why aren't people just going out and extracting and, and everything, getting high and experiencing reality like that? It's because they they have. They are testing. The scientists have also tested to see how much a uh, trace amounts of DMT is in the plants. The thing about it is that it doesn't contain enough so that when you extract it, it will be beneficial to putting it all together so that you can so-called blast off and go into a, a hyperspace. But it's found in the plants everywhere. All the plants have them. <laughs> but yet, it remains illegal. All right, let's keep going down. Let's keep going down, say. Oh, this is a little history. Ayahuasca first became legal for religious use in Brazil in 1987 after the country's federal drug agency concluded that religious group members have seen remarkable benefits from taking it. Some people who drink ayahuasca describe feeling at peace with themselves, God, and the universe. <laughs> All right, this is where they actually, the study took place. This is where the study took place. Come on. Yeah. It says... For our study, which took place at Brazil's Federal University of Rio Grande do Norte, do Norte which that research recruited 218 patients with depression. <coughs> Sorry about that. 
29 of them were selected to participate because they had treatment resistant depression and no history of psychotic disorders like schizophrenia, which ayahuasca may aggravate. Aggregate bait, yeah. These 29 people were randomly assigned to undergo a single treatment session in which they were given ayahuasca or a placebo substance to drink. Shout outs to the placebo. The placebo was a brownish liquid, bitter and sour to taste, made with water, yeast, citric acid, and caramel colorant. Zinc sulfite mimic two well-known side effects of ayahuasca, nausea and vomiting. So they had a zinc sulfite. They made it brown out of yeast and everything so they can actually throw up and actually make it brown and all mucky and everything. That's wild, that's wild. You know when they do the control studies with the psilocybin, LSD or anything else, it's mostly a pill or a sugar pill or sugar water or sugar injection or something like that. But they actually had to make something that makes these people throw up. That's some placebo for you. That's some placebo. Like, ugh, I'm throwing up. But is it gonna happen? Am I about to play a blast off? I can't tell. What is going on? That's, that's wild. So hopefully they actually got to partake in the ceremony. Like I said, they went through all of this for science. Oh, salute, salute. That's wild. That's the most wild placebo I ever heard of. <laughs> took, took place in the hospital and they designed it to look like a quiet, comfortable living room. The acute effects of ayahuasca, I wonder how much they gave them though. How much, how high was the dosage? The acute effects of ayahuasca, which include dreamlike visions, vomiting, intense introspection, last about four hours. During this period, participants listen to two curated playlists, one featuring instrumental music and another with songs sung in Portuguese. Of course it's in Portuguese, they're Portuguese. Well, they could have been Americans, but you never know. Patients were monitored by two team members who provided assistance to those experiencing anxiety during these intense emotional and physical experiences. Physical is that throwing up. All right, one day, this is day one. After day one, they observed significant improvements in 50 patients, well, in 50% of all patients, including reduced anxiety and improved mood of all the patients. A week later, 64 percent of patients who received ayahuasca still felt that their depression had ease. 64 percent, that's an awesome number. Just 27 percent of those in the placebo group showed such effects. <laughs> so the placebo got something. There's something about the mind and the body and the spirit and actually believing in things. My mom and what I believe is always that somebody can't curse you. And somebody can't curse you unless you believe in the curse. Look at it as like somebody saying they curse you. You gotta say, oh, you you can't curse me, or I don't believe in that. Or you can say, oh man, this this guy cursed me, and then you'll start thinking bad thoughts, um, limited self limiting thoughts, thinking that is you, and they're like, man, that guy cursed me. Or like, no, he ain't cursed me. Oh, I'm having a bad day. Is it because of that curse? Oh man, I'm starting to believe in it more. Oh, more bad things. Oh man, that guy cursed me, and then it's, it's just set from there. And then you gotta do some work to break it. But it's all about what you're willing to believe and what these placebo things really is mind over matter. And you really can be shown the power of the inner workings of yourself. We are the universe. Just saying. Y'all know how we talk on the Sata podcast. All right, let's keep going. Um, all right. Uh, building on past evidence. All right, yeah, this is supporting the 2015 Brazilian clinical trial on ayahuasca as well, where Dr. Jamie Hawker, the University of Sao Paulo, found the single ayahuasca session had a fast onset antidepressant effect. All 17 patients reported that depression symptoms diminished in the first hours after ayahuasca ingesting. This, the effect lasted 21 days. This study received a significant attention from scientists. Yep, it should, as it should. And this is how the actual brew look. I see it's all brown and everything. That's what they added, all the citric acid and <laughs> the yeast and everything to make it look like. That's why I showed this as a thing. It's kind of brown too, but this is actually a tea. I don't have the box for it right now. 
But I do have this that I wanted to show y'all. Yeah, vision, some vision tea. All right, uh, let's keep going. You see, they, they mix it in there, they mix it in that pot all together, then they spread it out during the ceremony in cups and just sit there and take it in. <laughs> no, I have not participated in the ayahuasca ceremony, but I'm manifesting that for a future. I want that to actually occur in my life. <clears throat> These two studies, religion turned science. What is this talking about? These two studies were primarily contributed to a growing body of evidence that psychedelic drugs like ayahuasca, LSD, and mushrooms can help people with difficult to treat depression. All right, all right. Yeah, they're saying Leon discovered the drug during internet research. He was desperate to find solutions in his intractable condition. And they have a church there that has 19,000 members worldwide. Wow. It's, not, it's actually ayahuasca churches. It's actually ayahuasca churches in America as well. And the only reason they use the word churches, I, in my opinion, is so that they can actually legally give people ayahuasca and say that's for religious regions, reasons. So just as the Native Americans used peyote and on their reservations they have something so that they can't get locked up for it because it's practice for use for religious ceremonial uses so it's, uh, there are places out here in america as y'all see they said this church had 19,000 members worldwide <laughs> so don't really get it confused with church church but it's all just the name game so they can be legal and actually help people actually help people <laughs> just uh just uh just uh let's get this let's keep going down what else they got talking about leon's blog provides an excellent description of his ayahuasca experience at times he conjure visions dreamlike scenarios that offer rare insights into the relationships in his life at other times leon experienced a feeling of ecstasy and a deep sensation of a manifesting inner spirituality it started manifesting him he was like wow we believe that these effects are critical to why ayahuasca works hmm Participants in our study responded to the hallucinogen rating scales, which helps translate these infallible experiences into numbers so that they can turn into data and compare and contrast to other scientist studies. <laughs> Participants who took ayahuasca scored significantly higher on that questionnaire than those who drank the placebo. Duh. Those who describe the most abundant visual, auditory, and physical effects during their ayahuasca trip had the most prominent depression reduction benefits seven days later. So what that means is people that actually took a high enough dose to really dive deep into these traumas, like to each his own. That's why I, I was saying they keep leveling up the doses during these ayahuasca sessions for those who want to keep going farther and farther. They were able to dive deeper, farther and farther into themselves and clear out some more hidden traumas, just hidden dramas in us, man. This is just all so real, so true to me. That it's just hard for me to deny it. Sorry, guys. I want to delete this. See if it makes it move a little bit faster. Hey, that's the Fine Funny Noun Show. <laughs> Check it out. It says, ayahuasca is not a pensia. Such experiences may prove too physically and emotionally challenging for some people to use it regularly as treatment. We have also observed regular ayahuasca users who still suffer from depression. But our study demonstrates this Amazonian sacred plant has the potential to be used safely and effectively to treat even the hardest to treat depression. 
And that's wild. That's pretty that's pretty awesome. Alright guys, I got one more. I got another cool article for y'all. It's on uh, actually women's rights and how it plays into this psychedelic research, psychedelic science, and actually promoting healing through the women aspect. Because y'all know it could be because of the church, because of the Catholic church, because of religion, how much the feminine aspect of us has been put down. And the the intellect control has been what we've been relying on all this time. When we need to be more balanced. We need to be more balanced in ourselves and in turn the world will reflect that. So this is an awesome lady who participates in ayahuasca ceremonies, but not just only does that, she helps women by helping pay for their scholarships and everything so that they can take trips with her to Peru to so they can get rid of traumas that men have caused or that other experiencing experiences in life have brought them to. But we're gonna we gonna tie on this. We're gonna get it together. Here it is. The woman who says psychedelic medicine cured her PTSD. And this is a New Zealand article. And I think I heard that she lives in Massachusetts now. This is Zoe. Hey, Zoe. Oh. <laughs> Zoe. It was a Zoe Helen grew up in New Zealand. She's now a psychedelic feminist in the United States who leads women on hallucinogenic journeys in the Amazon jungle. And shout outs to Susan Strongman for coming out with this article. It's from the RNZ. All right, here we go. The last time. Let's jump right in this. After I drink this. The last time Zoe Helen drank ayahuasca, she saw the ancient Greek goddess of love, Aphrodite, towering above her like a skyscraper, monolithic and morphing. She was ancient, powerful, and excluding all this energy. And she said, you called? <laughs> Helen follows this sentence with a cute, slightly awkward, but endearing giggle. Probably like the one I just did. I'll do the same thing if Aphrodite just appeared to me like such. Oh, wait, let me make me smaller. I don't know how that jumped up. <laughs> I'm gone. Now I'm small. Now I'm big. There we go. <laughs> Sorry for that. But this is the Sata Podcast. And thank you for tuning in. <laughs> All right, it says... Helen follows this sentence with cute giggle. We're sitting in the red court, in the red brick courtyard of the Charles Hotel in Cambridge, Massachusetts on a sunny autumn day. There's a photo on Helen's website, comic sister of her emerging Peter Tosh like from a thicket of cannabis plants. Oh, when I first arrived, I recognized her from it immediately. So you recognized her from the pictures we were saying she had thick mane. Yeah, you can see her hair right there. For, for those listening, she had a thick mane of curly, dark gray hair and eyelashes like glossy black ribbons. <laughs> Dressed in blue jeans and enormous cream color wool jumper, she placed a brown manila folder on the table in front of her. It's filled with a typed up yellow highlighted notes that she's prepared for our interviews. All right, I'm gonna skip down a bit. So as you're talking about, she met Persephone once before, but on this night, Aphrodite and Hela said was the goddess she peeved. I want to see why this is all happening. Why are they starting off with this? Why did they start off? Uh, she was she was saying, where the hell have you been, basically? And then I proceeded the whole night, which seemed like an eternity, to have deep, deep, difficult visionary experiences. I saw the visual, experienced the visual, experienced the emotional the emotion of every man that was major to me. Oh, so this Aphrodite character that appeared to her made her experience every 
male emotion that was ever delivered to her. So it's probably whatever form, like hurt or beneficial building up. During this journey, which is how Helen refers to her time spent under the influence of the psychoactive ayahuasca, she realized how much she had been abused and damaged by some of these men. And I had this dual experience of being myself back then, really being her and feeling it, then being me now and what I know and where I am in a safe place with a great husband. It was my own me too experience. Experience. The Amazon, that's awesome. That's awesome. The Amazon and indeed this hotel in the United States are a long way from Helen's childhood in New Zealand. She stylized herself as a psychedelic feminist. Bet y'all never heard that before. <laughs> psychedelic feminist. And takes women on trips to Peru to retreats to try this out. Apparently, the try out this apparently foul tasting jungle drug ayahuasca. <laughs> and she's talking about how the whole conversation was just on the bizarre scenarios that occurred during her plant medicine journeys. She first took it in 2008 on her wedding anniversary. And her husband, Chris, is nicknamed the medicine hunter. Wow, go figure. And he goes around doing something that I would like to do. St studying plants used around the world for and um, for healing. Yeah, man, this is what she said. She said, this is where feminism, oh, all right, all right, this is something, um, this is cool. Why? People like to say healing, and healing is definitely part of it, but I don't like to cram everything under healing as a category. Helen says, I really think self-liberation is a big one, especially for women. This is where feminism seems to come into it. On her website, Helen says she believes women are underrepresented in the field of psychedelics, and it's her mission to change that. And then they're just going over what we was talking about before, what ayahuasca actually is, the cappy plant vine mixed with the chotruna plant, which is that psycho, wait, that psycho, Verandas, I was talking about earlier about chutruna plant sounds a lot easier on the tongue, my American tongue, which has been used with centuries. It kicks in, accompanied with diarrhea. Saying this brew is subject to numerous studies. And this is what Helen said. Helen said, we don't know why it works. Um, we don't know why it works. We know it works. There's, they're finding out why it works from a scientific study, but you don't have to reduce it to a scientific study for it to work. Do you understand what I'm saying? And if it works, and if it saves your life because you got a deadly addiction, who cares what the science says, you know? The cute giggles from earlier are gone, and there's a sense of urgency in Helen's voice now. Maybe I used the wrong voice. <laughs> Maybe this is because she says ayahuasca has changed her life. Mm. Uh, she, yeah, they talk about her life again. And, man, I want to, um, whoa. It was something that was on here before. Now we're getting down here. I'm just going I'm just going to shrink a little bit, you know, guys. Don't be too mighty that you're not afraid to shrink yourself. <laughs> You'll get back up there. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this was something cool. This was something cool. As a teenager, she took each talking about her child when she was 16, she moved to Auckland. Her family lived on a farm. Her dad was scared of nuclear holocaust and everything. And then this is what she's saying. What happened one night without any substances or anything, all in our mind, we had a very psychedelic experience generated by our own high. It started out really interesting. Then it got scary, like a nightmare, Helen says. She brought herself back to reality, but says her boyfriend was unable to. He was like a little zombie boy. 
She says she was admitted to a psychiatric hospital to recover and she was left traumatized. So at 19 years old, she returned to the US to live with her grandparents. She studied fine arts, then became an actress, began before working in the tech industry for 10 years. She tried to forget what had happened to happened to her boyfriend, but it always come back to her in moments of panic. It was, she says, PTSD. Wow, the tile on my own life for a second. The really tile on my own life. Um, I really think that this happened occurred in my own life and that this occurred in probably other people's life as well. But during my teenage years, something just abrupted out of me. I started getting other thoughts in my head. And especially in college, that was the reason I left college. I was in a depressive mood and I was getting cold shakes. I remember my friend trying to help me to eat and I would like be shaking and stuff. And I would like have to go just lay down. I would have to lay down and things like that. And I felt connected with the world, but I felt like I wasn't able to do anything to help the sadness that I was feeling in the world. The people that was not, that didn't know how to be happy or to latch on to things that allowed them to get kick into high gear in their life and also i felt as i was detached from my body which i see now is an awesome thing and that that's a relevant thing but i felt as i was detached and i then wasn't able to interact with my body as much as i needed to in order to do the things that i wanted to do and i was on it was a lot going on it was a lot going on and it was very traumatic, but just like this before I was introduced to any kind of psychoactive drug or anything, I ain't know nothing about any of that. But reading her story really does tie it together for me because it just seems relatable. Because after my psychedelic experience, looking back, it's like that was that time period and stuff was very psychedelic to me. It was very psychedelic. Just tying, just tying on Captain Naga's life, you know. That's why we got to start this conversation. Always start the conversation so we can all come together, share ideas, and really get down to the nitty gritty of what's going on. You get me, get me? And right, then in 2011, while on a retreat in Peru, a woman went into a woman went into a state hell and says was similar to one her boyfriend had entered. She says the woman's experience took her back to her own trauma, which she experienced again in a lucid dreamlike state. Sounds wild. It is wild. You have to experience it with PTSD again. You have, wait, wait, you have the experience with the PTSD again, and it feels real and it feels like it's real. But when you come out of the experience, you have a new relationship with what happened. Mm, unlike her boyfriend, the woman came out of the state when her eyes opened and she said, hi, Zo, my PTSD was gone. I reached, re I recreated the situation and I succeeded in bringing the person back. I didn't intend for this to happen, but it never came back. My PTSD never came back. And this is what Helen was saying after her ayahuasca journey in Peru. Wow. She believes it dissolves a pathway in her brain relating to the PTSD and helped her create a new one, a non-traumatic one. That's the neuroplasticity that we observed in the previous, neuroplasticity that we observed in the previous Sata podcast that happens under psilocybin containing mushrooms, which has DMT in it, 4-ACMO DMT. Phosphorus DMT is all the same thing. It's like I was talking before. It's all similar chemical structure. So it's, it, those studies with the fMRI scans, look at them and compare them to the reports that people are saying on ayahuasca. And then just wait for those fMRI scans to come out of ayahuasca and you're going to be like, I already knew that was going to happen. <laughs> just tie, just tie, just tie. Just tie with me. All right. I think this where they was going at, where they was saying. And she decided to start helping others on ayahuasca as a tour for self-exploration and to encourage women to explore psychedelics in a safe and legal setting. Ayahuasca, yeah. Meaning it's important. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> the scholarship 
covers the cost of attending ceremonies at a retreat in Peru. And like I said, it's very expensive. Yeah, see here, it costs $3,700. Not even including airfare, I believe. Just, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. The first recipient, re, recipient, Rachel, now runs cannabis yoga business, Gan, Gansana in Colorado. So wow, at third journey, she said, I'm gonna just open up a business related to cannabis. And she just went and did it. Like these ideas, these ideas, man. The best ideas, not the, the most, not the best, the best, the most ideas that people act on at a lower level vibration and stuff is just drugs, crimes and everything. But we have these big ideas, but we need to be healed. This, this world needs a huge healing. People in the hood, people in the projects, people in cities, people around worldwide need a healing so that they can actually experience these ideas that are in their hearts in their minds when they tie remember just tying is when you come out of your mind with your heart the circle keeps spinning let whatever come out come out they're not able to they're not able to because of past traumas because of how society is deeming them how society is looking at them already and how much they already accepted of all this bull crap so it's really all oh man it's really a beautiful thing when i see that awesome women like Zoe bringing women down and helping them pay the costs and everything so that they can experience true healing and start real businesses, live out their actual dreams or realities instead of living somebody else's dream and reality. You dig me? All right, all right, let's keep going. I'm all out of tea. <laughs> All right. Um, and they just saying some follow up questions. Come on, been a string of deaths. This includes 18 year old California is found dead and buried at an ayahuasca retreat. Uh, what happened with these people though? A Canadian man stabbed after a man allegedly attacked him with a knife at for th at at a retreat run by Australian women in Peru. Whoa. Those deaths are not. Those deaths are not from ayahuasca, she says. She has a point. According to the I the I C E E R S, ayahuasca is really harmful, though it should not be taken by people with heart conditions on certain types of antidepressants or by people with a history of serious psychiatric disorders like schizophrenia, psychosis, personality disorder, bipolar disorder. Hence, advice to anyone thinking about taking ayahuasca is do their homework, read a book, and never ever do it on a whim. <laughs> Uh, with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs warning, saying there has been reports of damage, theft, rape, and everything. It's all about your personal responsibility on that one. Yeah, and that's how that ends. Yo, that was cool. Thanks, Helen. Thanks, Miss Strong Man, <laughs> for that awesome name. <laughs> Hey guys, that's what I got, man. Make sure that this is awesome. When it comes to psychedelic research, start that conversation. Start that conversation, man. And also, I want to throw in there, share this page. Check us out on Twitter. Check us out on the Instagram at Just Now. It's all the same Twitter handle. Just T A I, not T H I. Like food, come on. Just think about it. Just think about it. If you have any articles, questions, concerns, ways I can improve the show, if y'all want to be a guest on the show, just let me know. All right, guys. So now I will be back. You see you on my face like right now. Cool, cool, cool. Hey, guys, man. Thanks for tuning in. This has been awesome. Sata Podcast number 28. Ayahuasca, DMT, women's right psychedelics, man. This has been an awesome, awesome talk, man. So... Well, man, tires, <laughs> women included. So, um, I'm going to leave y'all with this. We all tie. Do we really tie? Sometimes, I don't know, dude. 
Sometimes I really don't know. Till next time, it's Captain Naga. Asking y'all to tie always. See you next time. Peace.